Welcome to my sewing room. I have the most interesting show for you today. The theme of the show is talking linens or linens that talk. Now, some of you might say, Martha, let's get serious. Linens don't talk. Well, probably they really don't. But if you find antique linens that have words on them, or if you put words on your linens, I kind of think that makes them talk. Let me share with you exactly what I mean, sharing with you items from my antique collection. This is a really cute matching set of, of towels that it says his and hers and has a cross stitch man and a little uh, an embroidered lady. Over here is another set of matching towels, once again that says his and hers. Very interesting and very pretty and to be used probably for very different things. Here is a hanging that's linen, and it says, Good luck, forget me not, and has some other pretty embroidery. A long time ago, especially in the 20s, there were dish towels or towels that were used for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and they had embroidery on them. Well, this one must be the little girl that's washing, and it says, wash across the wash tub. You see, she's running it through the wringer and, and the old-fashioned kind of washing. This is another really beautiful uh, dish towel that has the, words, has the word China on it. And then beautiful flowers and a cup and a saucer. I think that probably was meant to dry dishes. This is a really, really fun piece. This is meant to hold combs and brushes. You see it's got little pockets there. It even has a comb and a brush on the top. Now look how this linen speaks, how it speaks. It has comb and brush embroidered in and little tiny uh, lazy daisy flowers. Then the last one from my antique collection I'm going to share with you today has silver on one side, let me turn it around for you, and has glass on the other side. My thinking would be that this would, would have been used if you were going to set a buffet and you were going to put silver on one end and glasses on the other end. You also can make wonderful and very creative linens that talk. You have to know a little bit about how to make letters, though, in order to make linens that talk. If you'll come with me to the technique boards, I'm going to share with you all kinds of ways for you to make creative linens that talk. You can have a lot of fun making your own linens that talk. Let's see some creative ways to make letters. This particular letter I think is wonderful. It, it's built in, uh, well that, it isn't built in actually, this is just zigzag and then these little bubbles or little dots are built in. But if your machine has a dot feature, you can do one dot and then program the next one to be a little smaller or larger and do your own. This is one of my very favorite things to do. This is a Baby Daisy wing needle entredeau stitching in a letter. Here is your traditional entredeau stitching in a letter and using that wonderful shiny rayon thread. Here is a feather stitch stitching in a letter. Now some of the machines have built-in letters. This particular letter is one of those built-in letters that you use several different colors of thread. This machine, I use the machine to program the word Martha. Of course, you could put all of your children and grandchildren or whoever you're making something for. This is a programmed letter. And likewise, this is a programmed letter that is built into the machine. Now for the next letter, I use a braid. This is sort of a couching braid. And I kind of glued it down, or you can pin it down. And then you go over and stitch it. Now what are you going to do to finish off this end? Well, I put about an inch worth of seam sealant, such as fray check, right here. And then after it dried thoroughly, cut it off. Here is another one of these braid ribbon letters that I also use the fray check from around here and around here and then cut it off. Now then, here is another type of braid entirely. This type of braid was made on a serger. It's called serger braid. And you uh, stitch it down and you're going to have to do something to finish this end though. It won't look very good just flopping there. By the way, here is a nice uh, piece of the serger braid which I think is very pretty. When you're, this is another serger braid uh, letter and you see you have three colors of thread in there. After you get to the end, go ahead, take your thread apart, uh, put it in a needle. You, there's a needle threader there. Take it to the back and then simply take those three threads and tie them and that will finish. 
come over to the machine with me and I have a couple more techniques I think you'll really like. The first one is a couching technique to make a letter with couching and I've used beads to couch. Leave a few of the beads unstitched before you start your couching. And by the way, to couch, you try to get a foot that has a groove underneath it. Now then, leave your threads there and after you finish zigging and zagging, which is what you do to couch it, take the beads off, thread the threads to the back, and tie them in a knot so you can finish off your couched letter. This is one of my very favorite letters. This is made with lace and it is stitched down around on the sides with wing needle pin stitch or wing needle Madeira applique stitch. Now in order to get this beautiful letter, first of all, you have to shape your lace into the bra into the letter shape and you can pull up threads. You know French and English laces have threads built in. You can pull the threads and then stitch. Now there's a type of letter you can do that I really enjoy doing, which I showed you a few minutes ago with wing needle entredeau. Many of the machines do have a wing needle entredeau stitch built in. I use a 100 wing needle most of the time and I do sew real slowly when I'm doing wing needle entredeau and trying to make a letter out of it. All right, I'm going to sew. Well, that doesn't sound like it's too slow. Most of the time I use stabilizer. However, this is a heavy linen piece of fabric and really you don't need stabilizer if you've starched it really, really nicely the way I have. All right, I'm sewing down the line to make this L. And as I come to the bottom of the L, my machine has a one, I'm gonna slow down here. My machine has a one stitch pattern on it. So I'm going to sew, well, let me just see. Did I get far enough? Well, not quite far enough, so I'll sew again, and it will do one stitch pattern, and then it will stop. Now, I believe that's exactly the place, so I'm going to turn, and I'm going to wing needle entredeau stitch again. You know what? I had better remove that stop button, or this is going to be the slowest entredeau known to humanity. So I've taken off the one stitch button, and I'm going to make my entredeau stitch all the way out here to the end of the L, and now then I have a beautiful letter done with wing needle entredeau. I'll press the stop button and get it right to the end. And now then you can see I have a wing needle letter right there. Next, I have a girl's dress for all reasons for you. You're just going to love this little girl's dress, which talks. <laughs> Made out of a cotton and linen blend, this dress wrote the word original as far as I'm concerned. Look at this wonderful collar. It has the three uh, poinsettias appliqued on it in a cotton thread, and then it has Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas all around it, entredeau and gathered lace. Then it's the same wonderful princess pointed V uh, pattern that we've been using throughout the series. And the bottom has three really nice tucks and just a nice big hem, so it can be worn for several different years, and I'll show you why you really can do that. First of all, trace off the collar. Then go ahead and embroider the Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, and then put your, uh, then embroider your three poinsettias. Go ahead and be sure you center it so it'll look just right. Now here is a wonderful construction trick. How do you make a lined reversible collar? First of all, you have a collar front and a collar lining. You stitch it together all the way around the outside edges and turn it right side out so you have a finished collar. Now here comes the best trick of all making this lining. You have a facing for the collar front and a facing for the collar back. So your facing is going to be lined also. Oh, by the way, let me go ahead and show you about making an entredeau and lace string. This gathered lace is butted to the edge of the entredeau, zigzagged on, and when you're ready to put it on your collar, you simply trim away the entredeau edge as you go along and butt it to the finished collar edge. Now then, to make, to finish off this neck edge, you remember you have your lined piece, you're going to go in and sew your quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the edge around here, then pull up your lining and match it to your front collar facing and sew or serge 
all the way around the outside. Here I've already done it for you over here. So you sew or serge all the way around the outside and then you slip it behind and voila, you have a beautifully tailored, lined, adjustable collar. Now let's talk about why this is a dress for all reasons. Look at this cute version. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. And this really neat birthday cake on here with icing and filling in the middle and three birthday candles. It also has flames done in a metallic gold. All right, how do you do this collar? First of all, go ahead and trace using a fusible web. Trace your patterns off. Here's the cake. Here are the two icings that would be done out of red. Here are the three candles. Press it onto your fabric the wrong side and turn around and cut it out. Now then once again you trace off your collar on your, uh, on your collar fabric. Then come down here. You turn, your, since your fusible web will press on, you press on the three pieces, the icing and the candles and the cake, and then you come over here and simply applique or zigzag around it and you go ahead and put whatever machine stitching you're going to put on the outside of the collar. Now isn't that easy, our dress for all reasons? Next I have a beautiful silk ribbon embroidery stitch to share with you. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today Beverly Sheldrick. Beverly is from New Zealand and she is the author of the book Colonial Inspirations. She is also a regular contributor to both So Beautiful and Fancy Work magazines. Beverly, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. It's lovely to be here. Today, Martha, for your viewers, I'm going to show them how to do a carnation. It's a flower that is a little bit difficult. It's not quite a beginner's one, so we just need to take just a little bit of extra care when we're doing it. Now, you will see here that I have drawn a little oval, and this is the basis of what I'm going to do. I'm then I'm going to bring my thread through from the back. These can be done in both seven and in four millimeter. I like them in seven because they look a little bit more full and blousy, lovely. So we've come through here. I'm going to take a little gathering thread, secure it and continue until I get to this point of that wee oval. Then the thread is turned back and I go back again returning it underneath there. Then this little loop is com comes up and that comes up into the flower and it's couched down there and then we use a feather stitch, a, a tortured feather stitch to make the stem for this. It really is very very pretty indeed. Um, it looks wonderful in variegated thread. So we're now going to look at how it's done. Here we have our little oval and you will see that I have brought it through at this end and I've got those three little running stitches there like that. Bring my needle through and putting the needle down almost right beside it which f makes that gather. So you can see how they gather up like that. Then I will bring my needle back up again here and I will do the same thing again putting the little gathering stitches along here like this and taking it through to the back like we did before. Now you will see with this one here that I have brought it right along to the end here now I'm going to turn the thread back towards me and I will now do the same thing again. I will put that little running stitch in like that and continue on like that until I get to the end and then I will put this in behind like that so that it actually, it, when the needle goes through, it goes around behind this gathered section there. You can see how it is there. Now the next step is to make a little loop. You can see I've changed colours. I have four millimetre ribbon here and I have made a little loop. You can see 
it's freestanding like that at this point and that is made so that it comes up like that. I'm then going to take some embroidery floss, I've come up at one side there, I'm going to thread this through like this and then put it down into that like that and that will hold it in place. I'll come up just underneath it and then we'll do just a few of these tortured <laughs> feather stitches like that. Now I've used this lovely lovely stitch on a very very simple little project. This is for the person that has um, everything and I have a, d a dear friend who loves carnations. She's got everything in the world so I just made this little pen case for her to put that very special pen in. You can see how I've got these lovely flowers here. Very simple, simply a long piece of fabric, mark the pattern, work the design. I do want you to notice I've put these fold lines and when I've done these flowers I've taken them up. These ones go up also but this one here goes down. It means when you've stitched it and pulled it through you have the flowers going up like that. This one, is the, this bud is going up and turn it over and there it is. And it's ready. I simply finished it I've got my little antique button here, I have this and I have gone round here with a palestrina stitch which if you have difficult, just go through some of your, your um, embroidery books you'll find palestrina stitch in it. Oh Beverly that is such an elegant project and I love carnations too, that is a beautiful beautiful flower. Thank you. And next I have a home decorating project for you. Ice pink silk dupioni and both a solid and a stripe just have to be two of my favorite fabrics. This wonderful pillow has the striped fabric on part of the lined little pieces that go around it and the solid fabric on the other and it has actually a Swiss uh, embroidered with an M on it. I can't imagine that you would imagine what that would be for in the middle. Talk about easy to make. This pillow is easy to make. First of all, you have to put your uh, striped silk dupioni with your solid silk dupioni, a square, and stitch on one side and then the other side and then turn it right side out. Now then, this is the pillow as it goes under construction, but before we do that, I have to run a gathering thread. I have to run a, ga a long gathering thread in the silk dupioni because I've got to gather these little pieces before I can twist them and put them on the side of this pillow. Now you talk about an easy one to make. After you make the first one, I think this one won't take you much time to make one for everybody in your family. Now after we have uh, run the gathering rows, I'm going to pull the bobbin thread, go ahead and pull it up because I need to gather both ends and then it is really very simple. Let me show you what I'm going to do after I gather both ends. Here we go. Gather both ends up and then I'm going to twist one end over where part of it where the solid fabric shows and leave the other end where the striped fabric shows. Then pin to the rounded corners. See, stripe and solid, stripe and solid all the way around. Pin to the rounded corners. Put your top back on the pillow or your back back on the pillow and simply just sew. Look, do you see how you sew in a little curve as you go around the corners? Sew straight and then a little curve and straight and then a little curve. And after you put the back on, very, very simple to do, then you can kind of go in here and, and stitch just a little bit to hold it. But isn't that a beautiful pillow? I can see that used in any two fabrics that you might have in any room in your house, to tell you the truth. And now I have a really wonderful craft for you. I am so happy to have as my guest today Claudia Newton. Claudia is senior editor of both So Beautiful magazine and Fancy Work magazine. Claudia, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. I'm glad to be here. Uh, the technique that we're doing today is net lace darning. It's a very easy technique. It's one that uses large mesh 
to embroider over. You're going to use a heavy cotton thread and a very large needle. This is very good for beginners who are learning. It helps to read a graph and also for people who have lost some of their vision. This is a very good technique because the squares are so large and it's so easy to work over. So what we want to do today, these are some of the designs that you can do. This is fairly intricate design, but it's very simple to do, even though it looks very intricate. There's a different one here. This is a finished one of the one that we're going to work on sample pieces today. So what I want to do is to show you very quickly now how to get started. The first thing you'll notice on the graph, one of these squares on the graph equals one square on the mesh. And where the lines go over and under the lines on the graph, you're going to go over and under the lines on the mesh. So, I want to start with the hem because it's very simple. To start, we simply bring the thread up from the back and leave about a two inch tail back there so you can tie off later. All we do is go over and under, over and under, and then you pull through. Then you go again over and under and pull through. That's all there is to do in just the over and under part of the hem. But when you do the borders on the inside, there's a little more to the pattern. And I want to show you just a little bit of that so that you know even though it looks intimidating, it's not hard at all. It looks pretty fast too, Claudia. Well, it is. I've come up under here again. And once again, we just go under and over. And I've already established the pattern on my bottom row. So I know that now, rather than going just sideways all the time, I'm ready to go under here and come out up one square. So that I'm going to move up. I move up one more square and go over to the left. I take the rib, I mean the thread, I'm sorry, back down over and under one more time moving down. And that brings me back to the baseline so that I'm ready now for my over and under again. Claudia, that is fascinating. You know what that reminds me of? Did you ever see or do any hook toweling? Yes, ma'am, and okay. this is very similar. It's, oh, it's just, it's very about similar. how long would it take to make one of those placemats? Usually about think? three hours for a placemat. Oh, So yay, it works up is. very fast and it's very easy. <laughs> Thank you so much, Claudia, Thank for you. sharing this lovely technique. Thank you. Now, won't you come along with me to my attic? I have a beautiful child's linen coat to share with you today. The coat is made of a handkerchief linen, has a very tailored panel which comes down the front. Actually, that's a loose panel, but it's really a pretty one. And the main feature of the coat is this absolutely beautiful English netting collar that goes all the way around the coat. You see it's on the front and on the back. And then except for that and a few little gathers at the top, the coat is really perfectly plain. Perfectly plain and perfectly beautiful, I might add. For our Sewing from the Heart today, I have a letter sent to me by Polly Moore from Newton, New Hampshire. And it's a project that the American Sewing Guild worked on. As a matter of fact, I have a newspaper article from the Eagle Tribune in Newton, Pennsylvania, uh, excuse me, Newton, New Hampshire. This says, Sewing Club works together to give rape victims comfort. Northeaster's Sew Up a Storm chapter of the American Sewing Guild has taken on a project to help rape victims. The members make new clothes for women to wear home from the hospital. The new outfits will soon be donated to area hospitals. The intent is to lift their spirits and make them feel good about themselves. With a new outfit, they don't have to leave the hospital in disarray. The police keep the clothing of victims for evidence. The new sets of clothing are almost ready for distribution. They consist of outer and inner wear in a variety of colors and sizes. Members of the New England chapter of the American Sewing Guild have been meeting in Newton for the past few months, cutting and sewing the new sets of clothing. They first started the project at Horace Williams Community Center on West Main Street, and they recently moved to the sewing studio of member Colleen Jones, also in Newton. And they mention in this newspaper article that if anyone is interested in helping them with this sewing, they're certainly welcome to join. Once again, thanks to this chapter, the Northeastern chapter of the American Sewing Guild, for bringing a quality of life to women who are victims of rape. I have had such a wonderful time with having you in my sewing room today. Thank you for being here, and won't you come back next time? <music>